morning San Antonio starts right now. A San Antonio home collapses after it catches fire late last night. What SAFD is saying about a civilian that was near the fire when it happened. This morning, ABC News projects Republicans have gained a slim House majority with Democrats narrowly holding the Senate. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with reaction from the president to this divided Congress. And taking a look out there with live cam, it's 47 degrees this morning, still chilly, but uh, looking forward to things to be even more colder this weekend. And good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is November 17th. Welcome back. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you guys. It's been a cold week so far. It has. Mike Osterage is here starting out in the 40s. We're going to talk to Stephen in one second for a live update on a really bad situation right now on I-35. But Mike, we begin with you. Good morning. Yeah, it's still chilly out there this morning, but it's not as cold as the past couple. We'll drop down a few more degrees. Also, don't be surprised if you run into a couple little sprinkly showers out there. We do have some that are showing up on radar right now. Got a lot of clouds, so that's going to really prevent us from getting real, real cold, but we do have some temperatures up in the 30s in parts of the hill country, and that colder air will continue to move on in here. More on that in a second. First of all, here's the big picture, and again, just some very, very light rain, uh, especially down to the uh, southeast. Let me jump back there on the radar, and you can see everything is kind of sliding off to the east. These few showers down here in extreme south uh, and southeastern Wilson County, a couple of them going through Kennedy right now, and then further off to the west, right around Sabinal, Uvalde, a couple of those showers around Hondo. Again, if you're heading out on 90 or heading in on 90, you're going to run into a little bit of this light rain and also some light rain up there in portions of the hill country. A couple of those showers around uh, Lakey, and these will continue just to kind of slide to the east. It's not going to be any big deal today. Again, just a couple of light little showers out there, just enough to make the roads damp if you do indeed see some of this. 47 here in town, but then 39 Balverde, 41 Bernie stage. We've got a northerly wind, not very strong, but just enough and I think to knock temperatures down a few more degrees over the next a couple of hours, but again, not as cold as where we've been earlier this week. Mold is on the low side and throughout the rest of the morning going to go for right around low 40s, 42 to be exact, a sprinkle or two here and there. Then we are going to see more sunshine later on this afternoon, 59 for a high temperature. Once again, we are going to be 10 to 15 degrees below normal. Enjoy the sunshine today because we're not going to see much of it until Probably late next week, it's going to be a cloudy forecast and much colder, as Steph was alluding to. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, big accident, right, sir? Yeah, unfortunately, anytime you see me in this early, Mike, it's never a good sign. But let's go ahead and show you what's taking place here along 35 at Cesar Chavez. Uh, you can see those trans from this trans guide camera. We do have at least first responders out there, a few flashing lights. Now, this is probably the best shot that we're going to get from this particular situation. Unfortunately, the details are not good. We know that a black Mustang actually drove over a concrete barrier on the exit to Frio Street and landed behind the fire station. Now, according to officials on the scene, one man was transported to a hospital and a woman was pronounced dead by EMS. And unfortunately, this is a developing story. We are sending our Katrina Weber to scope out the scene to see if we can get a little bit more information, get boots on the ground and show you exactly what's taking place out there. But as for right now, uh, the exit to Frio just completely closed off. Those trans guide cameras or the digital signs, I should say, had it listed as you were driving into the downtown area. So just something to be on the lookout for. Let's get you to the map because it's early, so we're not seeing a delay. Of course, there are 35 southbound at Cesar Chavez, but just keep a lookout for that. If you are going to be traveling into the Alamo City, maybe a little bit closer to the UTSA campus within the next few minutes or so, for whatever reason, uh, if you have to head out the door this morning, it may be wise to find an alternative route if that is in your direction. But let's go ahead and give you a wide look at the map. Thankfully, everywhere else quiet. We're really not going to be talking about a whole lot this morning in terms of the commute unless something else pops up. But we do have to keep our eye right here along 35 at Caesar Travis again our Katrina Weber is heading out to the scene hoping to get a little bit more information and show us what the scene looks like on the ground. We'll have updates for you throughout the morning. Mark stuff. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, a home on San Antonio's east side goes up in flames late last night. Happened just before 10 on the 900 block of Aranzas Avenue near South New Braunfels Avenue. San Antonio firefighters say the home was under construction at the time. We're told fire crews were on the defensive the whole time, and the second story of the home collapsed while they were fighting the blaze. The home is considered a total loss. We're told a woman who was hiding behind a nearby building was detained as firefighters were working to contain the fire. 
This morning we are learning more about the West Texas earthquake some people felt here in San Antonio. A geophysicist physicist says the reason we felt it here is due to its size and the geology of the landscape. So the quake came in at a 5.4 magnitude, the third strongest in state history. Its epicenter was near Minton, Texas, and its tremors stretched about 350 miles, making it here to South Texas. University health officials explained they evacuated the Robert B. Green building and that staff wouldn't be back until an engineer checked the structure of the building. Here at the Moody Learning Center, there were some reports of definite uh, feelings of jolting on the fifth floor and just above two floors up on the seventh floor, the top floor, there were some reports from people of furniture actually moving. Scientists say earthquakes in West Texas are becoming more common, but San Antonio is not as likely to feel them unless they are at least a 4.0 magnitude. More than a week after the midterms, the balance of power on Capitol Hill is taking shape with new election results now in. As Justin Finch reports, ABC News re projects that Republicans will hold a slim majority in the House with Democrats gaining control of the Senate. After cementing a slim House majority, House Leader Kevin McCarthy appeared on Fox, reacting to Republicans retaking control of the chamber. It is official. One party Democrat rule in Washington is finished. We have fired Nancy Pelosi. McCarthy has also won his party's nomination for House Speaker and received congratulations from President Biden. The president saying in a statement he's ready to work with House Republicans to deliver results for working families. Democrats will retain control of the Senate, but the GOP win in the House falls far short of the red wave they hope for, prompting finger pointing about what went wrong. We underperformed among voters who did not like President Biden's performance in, among independents and among moderate Republicans who looked at us and concluded too much chaos, too much negativity. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell casting blame on former President Trump for Republicans' weak performance. Former Trump Secretary of State Mike Pompeo agreeing, tweeting, we need more seriousness, less noise, and leaders who are looking forward, not staring in the rearview mirror, claiming victimhood. Newly re-elected Florida governor and rising Republican star Ron DeSantis calling for an end to the midterm finger pointing. We just finished this election, okay? People just need to chill out a little bit on some of this stuff. I mean, seriously. And with the power balance on Capitol Hill now appearing set, all eyes are on current House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and what she will do next. The Speaker is set to announce those plans later today. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Russia strikes at Ukraine's southern Odessa region for the first time in weeks this morning. Air raid sirens sounded all across the country amid fears that Moscow unleashed another missile barrage. Multiple explosions were also reported in Dnipro, where two infrastructure objects were damaged and at least one person was wounded. Today, the blast followed a huge barrage of Russian strikes Tuesday, the biggest attack to date on Ukraine's energy infrastructure that also resulted in a missile hitting Poland. Western New York is bracing for a significant lake effect snowstorm that could dump up to four feet of snow in the Buffalo region over the coming days. The event is also expected in the east and southeast Great Lakes region. New York's governor is planning to announce a state of emergency that will go into effect this morning and will deploy emergency response assets ahead of the storm. Upstate New York, northern Vermont, New Hampshire and Maine are expected to see more than three inches of fresh snow with more than six inches expected in northern Maine. More women gave birth at home in 2021 than any other year in the past three decades. That's according to a report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The report says there were more than 50,000 home births in the U.S. last year. That's an increase of 12% from the year before. About 30 states reported home births, with West Virginia taking the top spot. Right now, 439, 47 degrees. ETSA Roadrunners get ready for a big matchup with the Rice Owls. Why the players say they're looking forward to this game? Outside with live cam, definitely a jacket kind of morning out there. Mid 40s in the Alamo City as we start your Thursday. You're watching GMSA.
Our San Antonio Missions under new local ownership that includes some heavy hitters, Hall of Famers in both baseball and basketball, and talk of a brand new stadium. The deal closed this week for reported $28 million. It's after City Council voted last week to transfer the lease at Wolf Stadium to this new local ownership group. SA Mission's new ownership group includes some heavy hitters, including Peter J. Holt as Spurs Sports and Entertainment Chair, Baseball Hall of Famer Nolan Ryan, and Basketball Hall of Famers David Robinson and Manu Ginobili, among others. There will be a press conference this morning at 10 o'clock behind home plate at Wolf Stadium to introduce the new owners, and fans are encouraged to be there. The UTSA Roadrunners will be headed to Houston this Saturday to take on the Rice Owls and Rice Stadium as 13 and a half point favorites. This will be the Roadrunners final road game in the regular season before hosting UTEP next week and hopefully the Conference USA Championship in the Dome on Friday, December 2nd. There's still a lot of work to do before that can happen. The players are also looking forward to this week's game for another reason. We're pretty excited. You know, a third of our team is pretty much from Houston, so just going down there and getting an opportunity to play in front of our families is a big deal, but we still look to, you know, do our part and do our job and come out on top. Kickoff in Houston is early on Saturday at noon with rain in the forecast. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. After drafting two quarterbacks, Juwan Pass and Anthony Russo, and first picks for the San Antonio Brahmas of the XFL, head coach Heinz Ward announced they've also added Reed Sennett, who was just released by the Dolphins. The draft continued yesterday, and the Brahmas added running back Jack pa Jacques Patrick with the third pick in the first round. He played his college ball at Florida State with stints in the NFL with the Bengals and, Beng Bengals and Niners, to name a few. And time now, 444 and 46 degrees for now. Coming up next, the hunt continues for the killer of four University of Idaho students. Why authorities there say this was a targeted attack? And welcome back. It's 446. Police are continuing their hunt for the killer of four University of Idaho students in an off-campus apartment. ABC's Kena Whitworth has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on the Idaho murder mystery as the hunt for the alleged killer of four University of Idaho students intensifies. Based on details at the scene, we believe this was an isolated, targeted attack on our victims. We do not have a suspect at this time. And overnight, Good Morning America, talking to the older sister of victim, Kaylee Gonzalez, as she urges the public to help solve her sister's death. Call it in. There is absolutely no harm that can come in, even if you feel like it's been called in already. Call it in again. If you feel like it's not being followed up with, find me. Tell me personally, and I will personally make sure, sure that it's followed through. And to the individual who did this, your days are numbered. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the very latest developments in this unfolding mystery. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kana Whitworth, ABC News, Moscow, Idaho. Traffic troubles require extra attention early this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, unfortunately, a deadly crash along 35 uh, southbound near Cesar Chavez. Now, information is still coming into our studio. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, our Katrina Weber is out there at this point, and uh, she did mention that the Sheriff Javier Salazar, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar, is actually on the scene now. We are working to get a few more details, and she's going to have more on that uh, later on during GMSA, but right now, you can see it there on the Transguide camera, that exit blocked off. We don't have a great shot of it, but this is as close as our friends at Transguide could show us, so uh, we appreciate that effort. But you see the flashing lights out there. The exit to Frio is closed off right now, so an area you want to avoid. We know that this involves two people. Uh, unfortunately, one of them was pronounced dead on the scene. Another man taken to the hospital with pretty serious injuries, I believe. So again, just an area you have to be on the lookout for as you're approaching uh, Frio Street. That exit will be closed off. We have it pinpointed on our map right there. Uh, unfortunately, fortunately, the good news is for drivers, you're not going to see a slowdown this early because we haven't even approached 5 a.m. yet. But if we still see that exit closed, during a morning rush hour, then that could probably change things. But thankfully right now you're still in the green if you are traveling in the southbound lanes, but just be on the lookout for that. As we give you a wide look at the net map now at 449, uh, looks like two other crashes may have just popped up within the last few moments. We'll get a closer look, find out exactly if we can even get a shot of the conditions from our friends over at Transguide. But for now, this will be the big talking point of the morning. 35 at Cesar Chavez. Again, we are working to get some details from Katrina Weber, hoping for that live report in the next few minutes, Mike.
Thank you, sir. Gorgeous, gorgeous sunset yesterday. This is an absolutely beautiful picture. Thank you very much for the uh, the KSAT Connect shot there. And uh, right now we do have a lot of clouds that don't really show up too well from this vantage point. And that's what's holding temperatures up somewhat just compared to even this time yesterday. Once again, more 40s than 30s on the map. We will drop down a couple of more degrees, though, despite the fact we do have some of those uh, clouds out there. And here you can see this is the satellite and radar loop over the past 12 hours. Also, some of the uh, light sprinkly shadows showers that are uh, that are showing up around here and just want to point out very quickly. There's that huge, huge area of lake effect snow up there right around the uh, the Great Lakes and the Lee of the Lakes because the water is still open. It's not iced over yet and that cold air comes over it and that's what gives you all of the uh, the lake effect snow. There's a little closer view of that. All right, back to uh, what we are seeing today. Just a 10% chance for a couple of uh, light little sprinkly showers around the area. Not many of them at all. It's going to be few and far between at best. Lots of clouds this morning. Then we're going to start to see more sunshine as the uh, morning rolls on. Make it up to 53 at 11 o'clock, 55 by noon. We're going to be topping off in the upper 50s later on today. Same thing we've, same place we've been the past couple of days with more sunshine. Enjoy this sunshine because that's going to be it because we're going to cloud up then late tonight and we are going to have some uh, showers then coming on in here and plenty of clouds all the way through the weekend and the first part of next week. Here's a computer model and it's got again a couple of little sprinkly showers around here. Really not much of any consequence. They'll be sort of off and on throughout the day. Most of us I don't think are going to be seeing anything as far as any sprinkles. Then we go into later on this, this afternoon sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds like we've seen the past couple of days. Then the clouds are going to continue to thicken up and we are going to see more showers, <clears throat> excuse me, tomorrow morning starting off and then just one or two of them and they'll start to pick up a little bit more in intensity as we go into the afternoon tomorrow, but then especially as we go overnight into Saturday morning and that's when we'll see a lot more rain around here and really cold temperatures with the next front. So here's what's going on. We have very dry air. Humidity starts to try to come back up a little bit early Saturday. Then that front comes in here. As you see, it just kind of trims humidity, prevents anything from really getting that humid. And this is also when temperatures really aren't going to be moving on Saturday. It's going to be a raw, cold day. Then as we go into next week, a lot more humidity comes back in here, which is also going to uh, result in and at the same time we see warmer temperatures going into the mid and latter part of next week, including Thanksgiving 55 degrees today at noon, partly sunny skies and then a high temperature today is going to make it up to 59 and a little bit of a breeze here and there. Not too bad. Now as we go into tomorrow, lots of clouds around here, 55 degrees and we'll have a couple of showers in the morning, a few more later on in the day and tomorrow night and then on Saturday that's at 44 degrees for an afternoon temperature. Some parts of the hill country may not make it out of the 30s even with rain showers off and on a couple of them Sunday. Another shot of some rain Monday, few Tuesday into the middle part of next week. Notice how we stay pretty consistent through the first of next week. Then temperatures start to go up 65 Wednesday. We're looking at mid 70s right now, Thursday and Friday of next week. And then another front will trim temperatures a bit. Well, Saturday looks blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just a good day to hunker down inside on Saturday. Well, at least we'll be prepared with our winter wear. It's already out. Yes. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. 453, 46 degrees. Up next, why a new dramedy on Hulu is in a little trouble. And big Hollywood director has a birthday. For Till, a new dramedy debuts on Hulu and how you can watch a special interview featuring Bruce Springsteen. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Toby Fleischman awoke one morning inside the city he'd lived in all his adult life. The new FX dramedy Fleischman is in Trouble comes at a time when anti-Semitism is in the headlines. And while the show isn't about Judaism specifically, it does feature Jewish characters and actors, including Lizzie Kaplan and Adam Brody, who tell me they're freaked out by the current climate. Yeah, it's horrifying. Do your part to fight back. It's horrifying. I mean, there's like nothing else to say other than for the first time in my life, it's the thing that I think about in a in a real world fearful same, way. Same. It's the first time I've gone like, and again, very privileged. So you know, I know, I know. Um, um, I don't want to seem so naive, but for me to go, wow, this is a real, yeah, pervasive thing 
right now that again is in vogue is like a, is very popular right yeah, now it's wild. that's that's something but the first two episodes of fleischman is in trouble debut today on hulu i'm starstruck <laughs> bruce springsteen recently sat down for a two-hour interview with howard stern and for those who aren't sirius xm subscribers you'll get to see it on hbo take hold it'll debut on the channel november 27th then it'll stream on hbo max and happy birthday to Martin Scorsese. The Oscar-winning director is 80 today, while Emmy-winning Drag Race host RuPaul is 62. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. 457, 46 degrees. Below freezing wind chills are expected today in the Deep South. The warning authorities are giving now ahead of a major winter blast. Changes continue in Uvalde following the school shooting. The town may uh, now has a new interim police chief and an interim school superintendent. We'll have a reaction from a special meeting last night. And a quick look at the roads with trans guy looking over at I-35 at Cesar Chavez. Our Stephen Cavazos is following a major accident that happened earlier this morning. We'll be right back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I can begin to understand what the families and the community have gone through. I want you to know I'm trying. Uvalde gets a new interim superintendent and police chief, but are the changes enough for parents and victims of the school shooting? Travel will be near impossible uh, during the height of the storm. A winter blast is about to tighten its grip on much of the U.S. As much of the country braces for a big snowstorm, we'll tell you where below freezing wind chills are also expected today here in the south. And temperatures drop down to 46 here in the Alamo City. Looking back towards downtown, Mike Ostrade is standing by with the forecast. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is November 17th. We have a major traffic situation. We want to begin the newscast with, with this morning. Yes, let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. A major crash here along 35. Unfortunately, not a way that we want to start uh, our morning, but we have to let viewers know what's going on here. So let's go ahead and get a wider look at Transguide. 35 at Cesar Chavez is the closest shot that we can get from our friends over there at Transguide. Uh, unfortunately, a deadly crash has forced that exit there to be shut down near Frio Street. And you can see just a little bit of it out there. The activity that has been ongoing for quite a while now. You see a first responder out there, more flashing lights toward the back. But unfortunately, the information that we are getting is grim. We know that at least one person is dead, another taking to the hospital. We'll hear from Katrina Weber in just a moment, but first we want to get you to the map and show you the good news here for drivers. No buildup is taking place in the southbound lanes as you approach Frio Street. We have it labeled there at Cesar Chavez Boulevard, but as you approach that area, keep in mind that you'll see that exit closed off at Frio. First responders have been investigating for quite a while, so you have to make sure that if you travel through that area, you give them plenty of room. Thankfully, there's not a whole lot else to talk about here on the roadways, just some road construction. I can mention that a little bit later, but right now we have to get back to this shot here at Transguide. And as I mentioned, Katrina Weber is live there now. And Katrina, you just spoke with Sheriff Javier Salazar. What did he have to say about this incident? Well, I did speak to him. Uh, let me just point out, though, what is going on on top of the highway there is an investigation. That is why the ramp is closed. That's where the crash began. But the scene actually down here on the street below the highway, that car came off the highway. Now, according to what the sheriff had to say, a deputy had tried to stop that car, but the driver took off, lost control on the ramp from 35 South to Frio and Cesar Chavez, and then came over the edge, landed on the on the street down here. A passenger in that car is the one who was killed. The driver, a 19-year-old, apparently with warrants, according to the sheriff, is the one who, uh, uh, the driver, and he is in the hospital. Uh, again, we do have an investigation up above. You can see some of the lights there on the highway, but the car landed down here on the ground. Now, the sheriff says initially the deputy saw that car going slow for a highway speed, about 40 miles per hour. Uh, sent out a message for the driver to pull over, but the driver took off instead uh, at a high rate of speed, lost control on that ramp, came over the edge. And again, uh, the sheriff does say that that driver did have outstanding warrants, and he is in the hospital right now. Uh, so that is where we stand as far as this crash goes. The investigation still underway. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you very much, Katrina. Of course, we're going to keep you updated on that incident throughout the rest of the morning. Right now, it's another cool one and or just downright chilly. 46 degrees and we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. Also, a couple little sprinkly showers. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Once again, we are going to be staying anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees below the normal average high temperature, only in the upper 50s later on today. Yesterday's aquifer reading, it did drop or excuse me, go up two tenths of a foot and the allergens mold is on the low side. All right, here's what it looks like outside on radar. We've got, like I said, just a couple of light little sprinkly showers. Not really uh, a heck of a lot, but just enough in places to make the roads kind of damp. We've got a few of these down here along the coastal plain right there, just uh, moving out of Wilson County in towards uh, Carnes County. And as you can see, sliding off to the east, Quero, you're getting a little bit of this uh, light rain as well. And then off to the west, we've got just a few of these showers heading out nine right around Hondo, southern Medina County, and further on out and back around Sabinal, you Valley, just south of there. Some of these may actually hold together and continue to work their way, it looks like, in toward western Bear County. And then heading up in toward portions of the uh, hill country, we've got just, again, a couple of more of these little light showers out there right around Lakey. And all this is just going to continue to drift to the east. So one or two light showers. This is not going to be any rain of any consequence. Definitely on the cool side this morning, and temperatures are anywhere from about three, five degrees below their respective normal. So up slightly even from yesterday, partly cloudy, chilly today. Like I said, we're going to be up in the upper fifties. Now tomorrow, plenty of clouds. We will have some showers around a few of them in the morning and then a slightly better chance for some rain just kind of filling in a little bit in, in coverage late in the afternoon and tomorrow night. Then we go into Saturday and the weekend It is going to be cold. We got a front moving through here on Saturday. We are not going to be getting out of the mid 40s. Some showers around good day just to hunker down inside and watch some Christmas movies and grilled cheese and soup kind of weather. What about early look at Thanksgiving details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark, Mike, thank you. San Antonio police say a teenager was shot while walking through his apartment complex early this morning. Happened just after one in the 4000 block of East South Cross on the southeast side near Clubview Drive. Police say while the teen was walking, someone in a car drove by, started shooting. SAPD says the teen was shot in the leg and later taken to a hospital. So far, there is no suspect information. An update on a deadly crash that happened on San Antonio's east side. San Antonio police say the man killed yesterday was on a stowaway on top of the cab of an 18-wheeler. Now, this was on Rigsby Avenue near Bermuda Drive on the east side. Police say the man climbed down from the cab when the truck driver stopped at a red light. Investigators say the truck then moved forward when the light turned green and unknowingly ran over the man. This morning, Uvalde CISD has a new interim police chief. This nearly three months after Pete Adedondo was fired by the school board and a month after the entire police force was suspended. Last night's school board meeting was the first held by Gary Patterson, the interim superintendent. Lee Waldman spoke with community members who say they are feeling hopeful. I begin to understand what the families and the community have gone through. I want you to know I'm trying. In his first meeting, Gary Patterson, the interim superintendent, appealed to the room, offering his condolences and vowing to do more for the 21 families and the rest of the district, starting with the police department and safety. My eyes are wide open to the scrutiny of our district police department. And I'm fully aware, and our board is fully aware how careful we must be uh, to make sure we're taking the right steps. The board voted unanimously to approve Josh Gutierrez as the interim police chief, with J.J. Suarez is abstaining. Patterson has worked with Gutierrez in two other districts. He comes with a long list of credentials with law enforcement and education. One of the things that is very impressive about Josh is he decided after a few years in law enforcement, he decided to go back to school. He received a teacher certification and a principal certification. Gutierrez met with community members, including Gladys and Caitlin Gonzalez. Caitlin has become an advocate for safety. He looks tough. Do you think he can do the job? Uh, if he's manly enough. The background, uh, work ethic, experience, I, th I feel that he is going to be able to fulfill the duty. So it's just a matter of time before we can see the outcome. We asked Gutierrez for a comment Wednesday night. He didn't give one. Looking more into his background, he spent time at East Central and Lavernia ISDs. The district voted to approve the location and conceptual design for a new elementary school that will replace Rob Elementary.
in Uvalde. Lee Waldman for GMSA. Well, with one week to go before Thanksgiving, much of the country bracing for some fierce winter-like weather. As ABC's Andrea Fuji reports, even people in the deep south are bracing for a bitter blast of cold. This morning, a winter blast is about to tighten its grip on much of the U.S. Heavy snow already blamed for power outages in parts of Michigan and Indiana. And today, a state of emergency is expected to be declared in New York. Travel will be near impossible uh, during the height of the storm. The plows are on standby as parts of upstate New York and northeast Ohio brace for snowfall rates of three inches per hour. One official calling it a very, very significant event. Mentally, I got the manpower ready, but um, as far as, you know, actually being ready for it, I don't think anybody's ever ready for the first storm in Buffalo. A lake effect snow warning is in effect into the weekend. Bitter cold air sweeping across above average lake water temperatures is expected to trigger massive snowfall totals, up to four feet predicted in the Buffalo area. Public schools already announcing they'll be closed tomorrow. It is very rare to see the Weather Service uh, call for extreme impacts, uh, which basically in some ways is the shutdown of the community while this event is going on. It all comes almost exactly eight years after an epic lake effect event dumped more than five feet of snow in the region, killing 13 people. The Northeast isn't the only region feeling this winter chill. Below freezing wind chills will be extending deep into the deep south. Back in Michigan last night, a preview of things to come at the Western Michigan versus Central Michigan football game. Players were dashing through the snow, even doing snow angels to celebrate a sack. Bulldozers had to be used to clear the field. For football fans this weekend, the big question is, will the Buffalo Bills be able to host the Cleveland Browns this Sunday? For now, the game is on, but the NFL says they will continue to monitor the conditions. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Yeah, can you imagine the game in Buffalo with six feet of snow on the ground? Oh my goodness. Shovels will be busy, 5'11", 46 degrees. Renting your home, how Airbnb is convincing more people to become a part of its service. Thousands of Texans lose their lives every year due to overdose. Uh, up next, what community members are doing to try to fix that problem. And looking out there with live cam, not as cold as yesterday, but still chilly. We're at 46 degrees. Grab a jacket. We'll be right back. Last night, more than 100 San Antonians gathered to pray for people in our communities who lost their lives after overdosing. One woman says she lost a family member four months ago. It's very sad, and this is a time for all of us that have lost a loved one to come together and support each other, recognizing uh, that human being behind that, that illness. The event was at Grace Lutheran Church downtown. 85 candles signified the local lives lost to overdose, each one represented by a purple ribbon. If you or anyone you know has a substance abuse problem, there is help. You can call 210-SAY-CARE. 515, 46 degrees. Apple is launching a revamped iCloud.com website. We're gonna show you its all new design and how it works. Right now, looking at 35 in Maine, this is not a problem spot, neither 1604 at FM 78. The one we've been focused on this morning with Stephen uh, Cavazzo says 35 at Cesar Chavez. You see flashing lights for a reason. Katrina Weber still on the scene. We'll get you update eight here coming up between now and the bottom of the hour. Did you know GoodRx can help you get a better price on your family's prescriptions? I just open the app, type in the name of our meds. That's it. Savings on my husband's blood pressure refills. And savings on my daughter's allergy pills. Prescription savings for the whole family. Have a good one. Another good reason to check GoodRx. Do you struggle with occasional nerve aches in your hands or feet? Try Nervive Nerve Relief from the world's number one selling nerve care company. Nervive contains alpha lipoic acid to relieve occasional nerve aches, weakness, and discomfort. Try Nervive Nerve Relief. Who says you have to spend more on skincare to get results? I power up my skin with Olay. It works. Guaranteed. Try niacinamide for strength, retinol 24 for smoothness, and vitamin C for brightness. I like to use them all. Olay. Face anything. 
Time check and now five approaching 520. Let's get a look here at 35 at Cesar Chavez. We've been showing you this shot for almost the last hour. A pretty serious crash that we know unfortunately ended with one person dead, another transported to the hospital. Now we know that there is an active investigation as we heard from Katrina Weber that is taking place up here along that level, but uh, the more of the investigation is taking place a little bit further below because we know Black Mustang actually went over the barrier there and again, one person died from their injuries, another taken to the hospital. We will hear from Katrina Weber a little bit later on in the newscast, but we do know she spoke to Sheriff Javier Salazar, so it's a pretty serious investigation, and we have to make sure we watch out because we are seeing deputies also out here along the highway. Uh, but you notice that traffic is moving. No slowdowns just yet, but you have to keep in mind, Frio is closed off, that exit there. Now, the crash is labeled along the southbound lanes of I-35 as you approach Cesar Chavez Boulevard, and we're not seeing a slowdown, thankfully, this early in in the morning, but if we are still seeing that investigation a little bit later on, of course, that is expected to change. Why look at the map? Thankfully, it is pretty quiet everywhere else around town. We just have a lot of those active road closures to be on the lookout for, uh, but nothing really is slowing the commute down just yet. In fact, we're going to put it back on rotation so we can give you a quick look around town. There at US 90 at 410. Very quiet start, but that will probably be the big talking point here at 35 at Cesar Chavez, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. And of course, we'll keep you updated all morning long with that. Uh, very cool picture. Great cloud eagle up there. That's very neat looking. Yeah. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. You see any unusual pictures like this, you know, your pet pictures? Please send them in. We love showing those. And also, if and when we do have weather, it's a great way to really just kind of pinpoint what's going on in your backyard or wherever it may be, if there's uh, something going on as far as the weather is concerned. And not a whole lot going on as of right now. We do have a couple of light little sprinkly showers out there. Portions of the hill country, as you can see, some of this rain is moving through uh, right around Lakey right now, moving into Bandera County, just very, very light showers. And then elsewhere, we've got a couple of them down here to the south. My button's not going to click for me right now, but just a few of these light uh, sprinkles. And as you can see right here, just to the south of 90, some of those are about to work their way in toward the uh, western edges of Bear County. So you may see a couple of sprinkles around the area this morning. Not anything to really add up to too much, but just enough to make the road kind of damp 46 here in town. We are right now about three, four degrees below the normal high temperature, normal low temperature, pardon me, and then mid 30s pair of 38s up there in Kerrville as well as Comfort Bandera as well. 43 Rio Medina and throughout the rest of the morning, we're going to keep a lot of clouds around. We'll drop another few degrees. 10% chance for just a stray little sprinkly shower or two. Not a heck of a lot out there at all. And then we are going to make it up into the mid 50s by noon with some sunshine thrown on in. A bit more sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds later on today. Not a bad looking day, 59. And it's not going to be overly windy, but notice how the uh, wind shifts around out of the southeast. So it's going to try and pull in a bit more in the way of humidity. First of all, here's some of the uh, showers, light little sprinkly showers around the area this morning. Then more sunshine as we go into later on this afternoon and this evening. Clouds come back on in here. Like I said, a bit more humidity, a few showers around tomorrow morning. Then as we go into the late afternoon hours and tomorrow evening, we're going to sort of fill in a little bit, still on the light side, but then we go into Saturday and that's when more of the substantial rain comes on in here. Plus we have a front moving on through and that's going to hold temperatures only in the mid 40s, about where they are right now. That's going to be all day long on Saturday. Plus, we're going to have the rain on top of that, so it's going to be not necessarily a fun day to be out and about on Saturday. 55 degrees today at noon, partly sunny skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 59, partly cloudy and we are going to be seeing a lot more clouds overnight tonight. So today's going to be last day we see a big amount of sunshine out there. Clouds all the way through the middle of next week, first to middle of next week. Temperatures will only be in the mid 40s on Saturday, barely creep above 40 on Sunday. And then look at the flip flop. The low temperature Wednesday is 52 degrees. We get up to 65, looks like 70, mid 70s by Thanksgiving. It'll be pretty nice for Thanksgiving. Yeah, it'll be on actually a little bit on the warm side now after being so much below normal by <laughs> Thanksgiving. So. But by then it'll be a nice break as well. It will be, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. 523, 46 degrees. Here, winning lotto numbers, pick three, five, three, eight, fireball six, daily four, one, four, seven, four, fireball five.
Your Cash 5 numbers, 217, 23, 28, 31. Lotto, Texas, 23, 25, 29, 35, 40, and 41. And Powerball is up to $93 million. Mega is at 238. The Powerball numbers, 28, 34, 51, 53, 56. Powerball, 11, Power Play, 2. Tech Bytes, Airbnb is looking to expand its listings with features aimed at attracting new hosts. The company is increasing the amount of liability coverage for hosts up to $3 million. It's also offering to pair newbies with more experienced hosts who can show them the ropes. And Apple has launched an updated version of iCloud.com with a brand new design. It allows users quick access to apps like Photos, iCloud Drive, Notes, and Reminders. That access comes through widgets, which are replacing the old iCloud. Cons. Finally, Samsung is expanding its game streaming to more devices. The company is making its cloud gaming compatible to older Samsung TVs. Users will get the full gaming hub with certain models. Others will only get individual gaming apps. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 527, 46 degrees. Control the House. Republicans are set to have the new majority soon. How Democrats are scrambling to block any changes Republican lawmakers have in mind. HEB recalling 94,000 pounds of ground beef. A lot of people use every day. We'll tell you why and the expiration date to be looking out for on the packaging. And move over chicken sandwiches is now time for a wiener war instead. How Sam's Club is challenging Costco on its famous hot dog and soda combo. This morning, Democrats are projected to lose control of the U.S. House. How Republicans are responding, plus what House Speaker Nancy Pelosi plans to do next. And let's look outside with live cam. We're at 46 degrees right now. Nice and chilly, uh, but not as chilly as it was yesterday. And good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is November 17th. Your forecast in just a moment. But first, Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, we have a pretty serious crash. If you are just waking up with us, take a look at your screen. Everywhere else is fine. We're not finding any big problems around town, and that's good news, especially for the morning commute if you have to head out in the next few minutes or so. But keep this in mind. Although most of these transguide cameras, things look in the clear, the big problem going to be right here along 35 there at Cesar Chavez. You can see flashing lights out out there. We spoke to Katrina Weber a little bit earlier and we're going to hear from her in just a moment, but she did tell us this is an active investigation that's been taking place already for a few hours. You can see uh, we actually do have also Bear County deputies that were actually out there on the scene a little bit earlier. Um, just be on the lookout. Uh, we know that this is serious enough. One person unfortunately died from their injuries. Another rushed to the hospital and uh, this has obviously led to this investigation to uh, see some areas closed off there and one of that being Frio Street uh, there at 35 Southbound as you approach Cesar Chavez, you will see that investigation. You will see that exit closed off. You have to be mindful if you are heading into the downtown area a little bit further south. We gave you a wide look at the map, and as I mentioned, it's really been a quiet start to the morning everywhere else in and around the Alamo City. But we want to bring your attention back here, and this will likely be the big headline of the roadways throughout the morning. Let's now head to Katrina Weber, who's still live there. Katrina, what's the scene look like on the ground? Well, good morning. Uh, we definitely have deputies and active investigation going on both down here on the street and up on the highway. Uh, this is after this crash, which happened a little bit after 2.30 this morning. A passenger in the car was killed. The driver is in the hospital. Uh, the sheriff's office says that this is the result of uh, the driver trying to get away from a deputy. They, uh, the deputy noticed that car going about 40 miles per hour on the highway, told them over the loudspeaker to get off the highway. The driver, he says, uh, tried to pull over but then took off. The deputy was not even able to call in the, uh, the chase or anything. Before he could do that, the car crashed, came right off the highway, off 35 South, down to the ground below. This is right near that uh, ramp for Cesar Chavez and Frio Street. And that's where this crash happened. So again, the passenger killed the driver in the hospital. The sheriff's office say, uh, says that uh, it was a 19-year-old man who was driving. He had outstanding warrants, also had, uh, he was in possession of a firearm. And so they are still trying to investigate exactly what was going on. And part of their investigation may include testing that driver for possible intoxication. But again, a very active scene out here this morning, been going on since about 2.30 and continues right now with that ramp shut down on the highway. Reporting live downtown Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you very much, Katrina. And she keep us updated all morning long. Step outside right now, and uh, it's cloudy out there. You really can't see all that well. Not too bad as far as any precipitation on the highway over there by 410, but we are starting to see a little bit of light rain in and around town. I'm going to show you that in just a second. 46 degrees, so we are on the cool side, but not as cold as the past couple of mornings. Dew point stands at 31, so we still have plenty of uh, moisture in the atmosphere. Here's what's going on on radar right now, and a lot of these just light sprinkly showers, and I want to zoom in right here, and again, on the, the south side of San Antonio, we've got a few of these showers that are now starting to show up right here along uh, 410, 281, 410 on the uh, south side, sliding over right there around uh, 37, and then back off to the west a little bit more. A few more of these showers. So if you're going down 35, you may run into a couple more of them, and then also going down into southwestern Bear County, a few more of those showers. More over here, just to the south of Castroville. So Lido, you're going to be getting some of this light rain as well as Natalia. Again, you go down 30, 35, you're going to run into a few of these showers. Go down 37, you will run into a couple of them as well as well as heading down in toward Floresville and then we also have just a few of these uh, light little sprinkly showers out in portions of the hill country. This is not going to amount to too awfully much, but just enough to make the roads kind of damp. At least this is not right there along 90 in Medina County heading over into Uvalde County, but a little bit of a uh, light rain out there enough to kind of keep the dust down and make the roads slippery. If you do indeed see some of these uh, showers, 38 Comfort, Kerrville, Bandera, 46 in town, 41 Bernie stage, and we do have a low amount of mold in the atmosphere. The updated count is going to come out in a couple of hours, 55 at noon, 59 for a high temperature today. A couple of uh, showers this morning, then more sunshine mixed in with the clouds later on. Still on the cool side by a good 10, 15 degrees on average. Enjoy the sunshine today because we're not going to see much of it as we go in, in through the weekend and starting off next week. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she'll address her future plans later today. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, some speculate she'll retire soon since Republicans are projected to take control of the House. The affirmative. The motion is agreed to. Democrats are projected to lose control of the House next year, and they're rushing to approve legislation before then. The Senate could vote on a bill protecting marriage equality as soon as this week. Twelve Republicans helped it get past a procedural hurdle. That's enough to beat a filibuster. This legislation just says that the status which is conveyed by one state has to be recognized by another. Uh, at the same time, uh, this legislation provides important religious liberty protections. Advocates want the House to pass the Senate version of the bill this year. That's before apparent incoming Speaker Kevin McCarthy takes control of the chamber's agenda. Some Democrats say they feel similar pressure to secure funding for Ukraine. I feel very strongly that the Republican Party is overwhelmingly in support of defending Ukraine. Future Speaker McCarthy, if that comes to pass, you know, will he bow to these small numbers of voices. Two-party control of Congress has been known to cause gridlock, but bipartisanship is always possible. I hope that they you know, stand for their beliefs, but they continue to engage with Democrats when they think we can get something done that's good for the country. We have got to keep this march to what a more perfect union. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. We have a gruesome story out of Houston, a word of caution that the details in this story are disturbing. This morning, a mother and father charged with the death of their young adopted son. Court documents say the body of seven-year-old Troy Kohler was found inside a washing machine at his spring home back in July. His adopted parents, Jermaine and Tiffany Thomas, are now charged in connection with his death. The complainant's death was ruled a homicide due to homicidal violence. The autopsy found the complainant had suffered from asphyxiation, possible drowning. Jumaine is charged with capital murder and Tiffany charged with injury to a child by omission. Investigators also review text messages from the couple's cell phone that describe how they were going to kill the little boy because he ate their snacks. A family of five is found dead in Phoenix, Arizona, victims of an apparent murder-suicide. The bodies were found when utility crews were investigating a reported gas leak. Once it was clear, there was no gas leak. Phoenix police entered the home and found the bodies yesterday. Investigators say there were obvious signs of trauma. The two adult parents were found dead, along with a three-year-old boy and six-month-old twin girls. Back here in Texas, a man convicted of killing his pregnant ex-girlfriend and her seven-year-old son was executed last night up in Huntsville. Stephen Barbie later led police to their shallow graves. 
The 55 year old was put to death by lethal injection just hours after the U.S. Supreme Court declined a final appeal. In his final statement, Barbie said, quote, I'm ready, warden, send me home. Barbie is the fifth person to be put to death in Texas this year. Time now, 539 and 46 degrees for now. Fighting deadly bacteria in baby formula. Up next, how the FDA is planning to stop these infections after four infants died after drinking the formula. America's two biggest warehouse clubs have declared a wiener war, but who will win, Costco or Sam's Club? And outside with live cam on your Thursday, we're going to look ahead to the upcoming weekend. A lot of weather changes are out here. Let's just say you're going to want to stock up on firewood if you have a fireplace. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 542 in your morning consumer headlines. HEB is recalling some of its ground beef products that may contain mirror-like material. HEB says the products are from its supplier Tyson Foods. The recall involves the 5 and 10 pound rolls of Hill Country Farm 73% ground beef and the 5 pound roll of HEB 80% ground chuck. They all have a freeze-by freeze date of November 25th. The Food and Drug Administration working on a plan to fight bacterial illnesses caused by contaminated baby formula. The agency wants a bacterial infection called Chronobacter added to the CDC's list of reportable diseases. That would require doctors to notify public health officials of any cases they see. Four infants who consume powdered formula from Abbott Nutrition last year developed infections and two died. Time now, 543 and 46 degrees for now. Up next, get ready for a cute pet Aww. that wants to go home with you from the San Antonio Humane Society. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Sky, Loop 410 and Exchange Parkway. Things are moving there and also moving in some of our other cameras like there at I-10 at West Avenue. But Stephen Cavazos has been following a huge crash this morning. We'll be checking in with him later on. Well, here is a little guy. The fur on this little guy is about as soft mm -hmm. as silk. How are you and your little speckled nose? Lucy's here <laughs> from the San Antonio Humane Society. Who's this guy? Oh, my goodness. This is Pisces. He's a two-month-old terrier mix with the cutest little ears. Oh. And he loves you. He just wants to oh give you kisses. Okay. Give him a kiss. <laughs> oh, shop early. And you still get the puppy breath here. Yes, indeed. And you get yes. those little sharp puppy teeth. Don't want you on my finger. No. no, those are like little needles. I don't want you to gnaw on my fingers. <laughs> So that's the thing. If you get a puppy, ow, if you oh, get a puppy, mm -hmm. look at me, I'm sticking my finger in its mouth. Uh, lots of chew toys, lots of chew toys, because they need to chew. Yeah, especially with this little guy. This little guy's full of energy. He just wants to play all day long. You got to keep a, a strong grip on him because he will run away from me. <laughs> yeah, but he'll make a great little play partner out there in the backyard. Not the biggest yes. thing in the world, but good go for walks, too. So yeah. what y'all got going on? So we are asking for donations for our enrichment program. Um, we, we need some new leashes, some uh, tasty soft treats, mm -hmm. some wet kitten food as well. Just all of those things that really help us train our dogs while we'll give them some extra so socialization activities at the shelter. Okay, and if somebody doesn't know exactly what to get, Amazon Wishlist, Amazon right? Amazon Wishlist is the way to do it. Yeah, it's so Simplest easy. A couple of clicks, it goes right to them there. But don't forget about yeah. volunteer opportunities. Yes. And also, if fostering, would you need, do you want to be fostered? He yeah. just wants to find a good home. He just wants something to chew <laughs> he, on. Yeah, he wants something to chew on and go home. <laughs> Those are great. Well, if you like more information on all of the things that they need on their Amazon wish list or just adopting this, again, yeah. puppy breath and soft fur, can't beat that. Yeah. 4804 Fredericksburg Road, just outside 410-226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. As we head into the busy holiday shopping season, America's two biggest warehouse clubs have declared a wiener war in response to recent publicity that Costco would keep its famous hot dog soda combo at $1.50. Sam's Club has fired back. The Walmart owned warehouse club announced it's lowered the price of its hot dog soda combo to $1.38. Not only is it 12 cents cheaper, Sam's Club membership fee is also less than Costco's. It's not clear yet how Costco will respond, but the winners in all this will likely be us, millions of Christmas shoppers. Yeah, it's a nice little snack break there. Not bad, not bad. 548.
Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Still problems out there at I-35 at Cesar Chavez. Yeah, unfortunately, things look bad here as well, guys. 35 there, you can see those flashing lights. That active investigation still taking place. Uh, you know, we're seeing some of those units, deputies move in and around the area. So that's actually the exit toward Frio that has been blocked off because we know that this crash happened earlier. And unfortunately, one person died, another taken to the hospital with pretty bad injuries. And uh, that uh, we know that the Mustang actually went over the barrier there and landed actually on the bottom. And we've been talking to Katrina Weber throughout the morning. She will continue to hear more from her throughout the show. But uh, of course, serious enough to where we saw Sheriff Javier Salazar come out on the scene to provide some information. So again, another full report from Katrina Weber coming up in our next hour of GMSA. But for now, traffic is still moving pretty steadily through that area. Just watch out as you approach Frio Street because that exit is still blocked off uh, near Cesar Chavez Boulevard. But notice there's no slowdown that has been building, so that's good news. But as we approach 6 a.m., that's likely to change. Now, everywhere else around the map is looking pretty quiet, thankfully. And as we get to those travel times, nothing's looking bad there as well. Uh, just for, I haven't had a chance to mention this. If you are going to be are going to be traveling into the Alamo City in the next few minutes, no need to rush, but again, 6 a.m. is approaching, so we know a lot of traffic troubles could be approaching in that particular stretch where we have that problem. But for now, things here around town aren't looking too bad. All right, No Shave November continues. I was just telling yes. Stephen off camera, my beard's driving me nuts. Yeah. I, was, I was ready to keep this thing for like a year, and now I'm ready. But we're still doing this for a great yes, cause. Great cause. You know what? I, I, I can't empathize with you much because I only got is this, and I'm fine with that. But uh, hair doesn't grow on steel. Right. Okay. Hair doesn't grow on steel. That's his line. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to get that on a shirt next year. All right. <laughs> hey, uh, but you know what? We're doing fantastic. We're still number one, holding strong, uh, top spot in the country. Uh, obviously, this is great because all the funds that we are raising goes back toward cancer research, treatment, and prevention. We raised close to 10000 so we're almost halfway to our goal of 20000 But we are hearing from our team. And now we have my buddy, Mark Austin. Let's hear his testimony this morning. I am doing No Shame November in memory of David Larson, who passed away from colon cancer. You know, prevention is the key, guys. You have to make your own health a priority. I've always said a man cannot truly take care of his family unless he makes his own health a top priority. Let's make it happen. No Shame November. Anything else you want to say good with point. that, Mark? That was a good point. I'm going to stick with the short and sweet. Yeah. Yes. You know what? It gets the message across very powerful. But here's a quick look at our leaderboard. You know, Mike Osterhage still holding strong at that top spot. We got to knock him off. Yeah, Mark, you're right behind him. 1205. I'm pretty steady. I've been steady about $1,000, which is fantastic. Uh, Jonathan nice. Goto has been making his way up the ranks yes, as well. He has. 570 bucks. So congratulations to him. And David Sears, talked to him yesterday, $550. He's saying he's starting to look a little bit more like Woody Harrelson. <laughs> Can y'all see that? Viewers uh, have said that as well. They have said yes. that. And you know what? Uh, you can always head over to donate, kset.com slash no shave. Every dollar counts. You could donate to our team as a whole or to any of us here. But big thank you to our GMSA viewers yes. for keeping your three favorite guys here at the top. Yes. Uh, and if I got to you guys. bumped down to last place, that would mean a lot of big a donations. A lot of money. So, so I hey, would love it. It's all fun. <laughs> it would be fantastic. So, and, and again, we're, awareness for guys in particular, but all the donations are various uh, cancer, cancer organizations. Yep. So yeah. thank you of them. very thank much. You guys. All right, beautiful view yesterday out there at uh, Woodlawn Lake. Had a uh, couple of clouds hanging around here. Mr. McClellan took a gorgeous, gorgeous shot right there. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture and uh, send in some of those pictures for us. We love showing these off. All right, got some clouds hanging around here, as you can see now in this picture. And we also have a couple of light little sprinkly showers out here heading over to the west into Medina County, into Uvalde County, and then right here on the uh, the southwest side of Bear County. If you're going down 35, you are going to run into some of these light showers coming right across the highway right there. And then just over by Mitchell Lake, 410 on the south side of town and further on down to the southeast a little bit more. Closer into downtown, we're not really seeing anything on radar as of yet, but just be on the lookout for a couple of more of these showers, a few more in portions of the uh, hill country. And then also if you're sliding down to the southeast, Floresville down in toward Kennedy, we see a couple of these showers over there toward Cuero. It's not any rain of any consequence, just enough to make roads on the slippery. So just 
keep in, keep that in mind. It's going to be that light little bit of rain out there. 46 degrees in town, 30s in parts of the hill country. Throughout the day, we're going to be holding fairly steady, dropping down a couple more degrees this morning. That 10% chance for a couple of light sprinkly showers. Then we will see more sunshine later on today, mid 50s, and then we get into the afternoon hours, 59 for a high temperature. Here's some of the light little sprinkles we see around here this morning. Sunshine in the afternoon. Then the clouds come back in here overnight, and we're going to see some showers around tomorrow morning into the afternoon and then we go into Saturday and that's when we see a better chance for some rain around here and this is going to be sticking around throughout most of the day. A front moves through as well. That's going to hold temperatures down. We're going to be cooler than what we are right now on Saturday throughout the day. 55 partly cloudy skies today at noon. High temperature up to 59 with some sunshine. Not going to see much sunshine throughout the rest of the week and going into next week. And that front moves through again. Saturday is going to be kind of a raw day. Very chilly over the weekend, but warmer as we move in toward Thanksgiving. We'll be back after this. Don't forget our KSAT Community Share the Shoes campaign is going on right now. You can donate a new pair of shoes or socks to a child in need. Just take your donation to any San Antonio Police Substation through December 16th. This donation drive benefits Zapatos, which works with schools to help kids get the shoes they need. You can find more information on the KSAT community page at KSAT.com. Can gossip make you sick? Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, why gossiping can be more than just harmless water cooler chatter and what experts say it could actually be doing to your body. Trans guide right now, taking a look at uh, some flashing lights there at 281 and winding away. The hazards are on, and we've still got this incident at 35 at Cesar Chavez that we've been uh, monitoring since we went on the air this morning. Stephen Cavazos will have a live update coming up. A woman is dead this morning after a rollover crash just west of downtown. We're going to tell you everything we know so far. Lots of questions this morning after an overnight house fire on the east side of town. Why police are getting involved in the investigation just ahead. This morning, ABC News projects Republicans have gained a slim House majority with Democrats narrowly holding the Senate. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with reaction from the president to this divided Congress. And taking a look out there with a live cam, still chilly. We're at 46 degrees, uh, not as cold as yesterday, but you still need that jacket. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Thursday, November 17th. Thanks for starting your morning with us. Welcome back. Mark. Thank you. Been under the weather all week long. It's been rough, but here I am. Glad you're feeling better. Thank you. And uh, you have the nice cold weather still to enjoy. Yeah, I uh, wanted to stay under the covers every day for the last <laughs> four or five days, Mike Osterhage. It looks like that trend's going to continue for the rest of the week and into the weekend. Yeah, all of us have wanted to just uh, kind of throw the covers back over your head, especially on Saturday, because it's going to be one of those days where, yeah, you just don't want to go outside on Saturday. This morning, yep, we all have to head off to work and school. The road is uh, fairly dry over there by the airport, but as you can see, we do have a few light little showers around the area. Going down here to the, the southeast, you may run into a couple of them heading down to 37 there just to the south of Pleasanton, Floorsville. A couple of showers just moved on through right around Kennedy, Quero, and then here in town. We've been watching this kind of the, the one little line of rain move in from Medina County, and it's now there in southern Bear County. Just there were a few showers right there along 410 and just about 37. And then as you head down 35 in toward Lytle and further on down by Divine, you're going to run into just a couple of these light showers. Not much of anything, just enough to make the roads sort of damp, and that continues over there and in southern Medina and southern Uvalde counties. A few more of these showers. Just, again, very light stuff up there in portions of the hill country. It'll be sticking around for the next couple of hours. Temperatures are in the mid to low 40s. Uh, 48, though, a little bit warmer down around Stinson as well as Pleasanton. Then 30s up in portions of the hill country. Mold is on the low side. The updated count is going to come out in about an hour, hour and a half. Temperatures, we may fluctuate another a couple of notches here. The the cloud cover is helping to keep things it's, that's acting like the blanket over us, keeping us not from getting as cool as what we could get. And then we are going to continue to warm up, see a little more sunshine by late in the morning, 55 at noon. And then we go into later on today, 59 for a high temperature, about where we've been the past couple of days. And that's still 10, 15 degrees below normal, and that is going to be the case again tomorrow. Then talk about below normal temperatures. 
is going to be really cold on Saturday. We warm up though as we head in toward Thanksgiving. We'll take a look ahead way down the road toward Turkey Day in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso, still got the big incident on the uh, yep. near south side, right? Yes, and unfortunately, this is one of those times where uh, we have an incident like this. It could cause an issue with traffic. Now, unfortunately, those details are grim. We do know at least one person died from their injuries. Another was taken to the hospital, but uh, this is actually an investigation is what we're looking at from this trans guide camera. You can see some of those flashing lights out there actually have closed off that exit ramp toward Frio Street. So if you are driving down I 35 South, you may have seen those. You may see those overhead signs that show that there is an accident that is led to this particular area to be shut down. So thankfully it's not impacting a whole lot of traffic. But as I mentioned, it's 6 AM, so things are going to change here pretty quickly. Uh, you see there in the southbound lanes is where it's been pinpointed, but no buildup just yet. It's very early, but something you have to be on the lookout for. Uh, we mentioned that this has been an ongoing investigation for several hours where we know deputies, Bear County deputies that is also had to come out on the scene. And we also have our Katrina Weber there who's been live throughout the morning. Katrina, what is the very latest at 6 AM? Well, good morning. We just spoke with the sheriff just a few minutes ago and he updated us on things. He says that uh, investigators are working to finish as quickly as possible up on the highway so that they can reopen this ramp 35 South near Frio. Uh, this scene, though, he says could remain here for quite some time because this is where the car landed. We still have that car here at the scene. Now, this crash happened after 2.30 this morning. According to the sheriff, a deputy spotted this car going about 40 miles per hour on the highway radioed or spoke over the loudspeaker telling the driver to pull off the highway because he was in a dangerous area. Now, the driver appeared to be pulling over, but then, according to the sheriff, he started speeding up, took this ramp, which is sort of a roundabout, and that's where he lost control, came off the highway and landed on the street below. There was a passenger in the car who was killed. The driver, a 19-year-old man, was taken to the hospital. The sheriff did tell us just uh, just now that they have drawn blood from that driver at the hospital, and they're going to analyze it to see if he was intoxicated. He says that that man also had outstanding warrants from another city in the state, and he was in possession of a firearm. And he says that they searched the car, and they did find uh, some checkbooks that did not appear to belong to this driver or anyone in the car. So. Uh, they are trying to investigate and see what the story is with those. But again, the passenger killed. They're not sure at this point of the gender or the age of that passenger. But the driver, a 19 year old in the hospital, possibly uh, facing charges. And according to the sheriff, he did suffer some serious injuries as well. So their investigation here on the ground continues. But again, the sheriff says that they're working as quickly as possible to try to wrap things up on the highway so they can reopen this ramp. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, a home under construction is now completely destroyed after an overnight fire on the east side of town. This happened around 10 last night on Aransas Avenue and South New Braunfels. Crews had their hands full with the flames, but they were able to get them put out. While it's still not clear what sparked this fire, police tell us they found gas rags and matches in the area, and they're talking to a woman who was hiding behind a nearby building at the time of the fire. More than a week after the midterms, the balance of power on Capitol Hill is taking shape with new election results now in. ABC's news projects Republicans will hold a slim majority in the House with Democrats gaining control of the Senate. ABC's Justin Finch has more. Good morning. The White House has been bracing for a divided Congress, releasing a statement from President Biden saying the future is too promising to be trapped in political warfare and that the president is willing to work with anyone to deliver results for the American people. After cementing a slim House majority, House leader Kevin McCarthy appeared on Fox, reacting to Republicans retaking control of the chamber. It is official. One party Democrat rule in Washington is finished. We have fired Nancy Pelosi. McCarthy has also won his party's nomination for House Speaker and received congratulations from President Biden. The president saying in a statement he's ready to work with House Republicans to deliver results for working families. 
Democrats will retain control of the Senate, but the GOP win in the House falls far short of the red wave they hope for, prompting finger pointing about what went wrong. Former Trump Secretary of State Mike Pompeo agreeing, tweeting, we need more seriousness, less noise, and leaders who are looking forward, not staring in the rearview mirror, claiming victimhood. And with the power balance on Capitol Hill now appearing set, all eyes are on current House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and what she will do next. The Speaker is set to announce those plans later today. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, our San Antonio Missions under new local ownership that includes some heavy hitters, Hall of Famers in both baseball and basketball, and talk of a brand new stadium. The deal closed this week for a reported $28 million. It's after City Council voted last week to transfer the lease at Wolf Stadium to this new local ownership group. So who are they? Well, the new ownership includes Peter J. Holt as chair, Baseball Hall of Famer Nolan Ryan, and Basketball Hall of Famers David Robinson and Madhu Ginobili. There'll be a press conference this morning at 10 a.m. behind home plate at Wolf Stadium to introduce the new owners. Fans are encouraged to be there. In your morning consumer news, shoppers are still shopping despite higher prices for just about everything. Retail sales in October jumping 1.3% after remaining unchanged the month before. The Commerce Department seeing increases in sales of everything from food and gasoline to cars and furniture. Retail giant Target has seen some pullbacks among its shoppers in the last couple of weeks. The company has lowered its financial goals for the holiday season, and Target sales in the most recent quarter missed expectations. Spending a day at Disney will cost you more soon. Prices for tickets are expected to go up starting early next month, and prices will be based on which park you visit and when you go. The most expensive, a one-day ticket at Magic Kingdom around Christmas, $189. Airbnb looking to expand its listings with features aimed at attracting new hosts. The company increasing the amount of liability coverage for hosts up to $3 million. It's also offering to pair newbies with more experienced hosts who can show them the ropes. Apple's launched an updated version of its iCloud.com with a brand new design. It allows users quick access to apps like Photos, iCloud Drive, Notes, and Reminders. That access comes through widgets, which are replacing the old icons. Samsung expanding its game streaming to more devices. The company is making its cloud gaming compatible to with older TVs. Users will get the full gaming hub with certain models. Others will only get individual gaming apps. Time now, 610 and 46 degrees for now. Much more to come on GMSA, including the dramatic body cam video from Kansas. Shows police pulling a woman from a burning SUV. That's coming up a little bit later. And a winter blast is set to tighten its grip on parts of the U.S. We're going to tell you when and where after the break. And if you're thinking that's going to affect our weather here in South Texas, your hunch is correct. We'll take a look at the extended forecast, including what could happen this weekend here in South Texas with Mike Osterhage coming up.